<clears throat> Making a champion, um, it comes in so many different guises. There's so many different people that can become champion, different personalities. I don't think there's a blueprint. I think people that win are the people that can keep most balanced on a day and do the simple things perfectly right all the time. They don't make it complicated. They keep the basics, one, two, three. They're level-headed and they fight in the moment. I was five, six years old when I started judo and uh, it was because my brother was uh, do, yeah, doing judo and he was yeah, really good at it. He won a lot of medals and I thought, yeah, I want the same. Last year I moved to Papenau. Um, it's, it was a big transition for me. Uh, before we always had the club uh, system and uh, that was working for me. But um, yeah, here we had uh, GP. Uh, it was uh, it was one of the national coaches, and I had uh, yeah really good uh, good contact with him, good feeling. That made the transition much easier, much better, much uh, everything got better for me here. Yeah. So what we tried to work on was keeping him in balance all the time, um, making sure he kept sight of the bigger picture rather than what was directly in front of him. Um, and focusing really on the small targets and the goals that would get him to the bigger picture. Uh, unfortunately, it worked on pretty much most counts. Um, but it's really easy as high performance athletes to, to lose sight of stuff uh, because there's lots going on. It's chaos from qualification to financial to funding. To, um, but you ultimately have to realize why you're still doing it. So if everything was taken away tomorrow, you ask yourself the question, would you still be doing it? And um, pretty much most of the time the answer is yes. So you just go back to the beginning. When I came off funding, it, it was a really hard, um, hard time for me because, yeah, I had no money. So uh, it, it was a difficult time, but I managed to, to yeah, to put, set my mind good again and go for judo 100% again. So that's why I moved to Papano and everything was pointed in, in judo again. And uh, that make a big, made a big difference for me. And apparently from there, I grew very, uh, yeah, very steady, very, very quickly. The psychological side of it at the highest level is probably more important than the technical side of it. Uh, most of them have the ability to perform. Most of them can do judo to a super high level. It's whoever's really focused and on point on the day. I think keeping sight of the psychological stuff, working with small triggers, we build triggers into the training, always keeps them back online. I guess that was a major difference between coming out of 2018 through to 2019 was, was uh, the psychological side. The 29th of August, the, the, the day I needed to fight at the World Championships, I, I woke up very confident. I was feeling very good. Um, my diet has been good. Everything around it was perfect. The trainings went really well, so yeah, I was really confident in myself. Like, yeah, yeah. If if it's not going to happen this day, it's it's never going to happen. Going into the World Championships, I think um, it's very cliched, but uh, you take it as another tournament, it's just another tournament. Um, I guess that's true to a degree, but um, it's not. It's not just another tournament. So I think getting in front of it is something we use a lot. It is the World Championships, you want to perform. Knowing that you can perform well and get on the podium is one thing. Truly believing it is something else. Two Shinos apiece, they've got to go for it. This then for a place in the final. Look how low he is! Oh, Van 
to end in the final. That was brilliant from him. So did Surakumi Goshi. And look at the crowd, they erupt. Finals, any finals is a high pressurized thing. I think people look at finals um, slightly different. You, you, you're in a final, you, you've got a minimum of silver medal. Most people then are quite happy to just fight. So that kind of like you feel the nerves go, you feel the pressure go. Um, it is also a really good opportunity if you turn it around on your head to go after the match to win. You often hear people say nothing left to lose. So going into that final, uh, I think we both felt if he fought the right fight, he would win it. So his, his mindset was trying, not trying not to lose that final. He had to go for it. He had no choice but to go for it. There was no, no second chance. And I think he was coming at a better place than Mukai because his home crowd, he's expected to win, everything was on it. Now, well, he was coming at it like he was giving it all. He was not coming off that mat without giving everything. And I think that was a better mindset to fight a final. Winning finals is a really important trait. Getting to the finals, people do really well. And, and then it changes, the pressure changes. Oh, I can't lose, or I did it. But if you get to a final for me, you just go for it. The fight against Bukai was, was, was a difficult fight. I know how, how, how strong he is, how good he is in judo. He can, he can drop left and right. He, can, he has a lot of scoring abilities. So I knew what I needed to do was yeah, score on him. Uh, it was not going to be a Shido fight. I just I wanted to score on him. Anything first. That came as the first attack. Oh, oh for James! Oh, yes! He's going to get a that score. Was, yeah, good combination. I've been practicing my Osoto Koso uh, many times before, and I knew I needed to use it against him. But I only had one chance because if I missed that chance, I knew it was it was going to happen. So I needed to pick the right moment. And I'm really happy that I picked the perfect moment for it. Yeah. I think when the gong went, I was, uh, <laughs> I was still slightly worried about the score. I haven't seen it in real time. I know it was a definite score, but in that moment, I'm like not trusting that they won't change it. So I was really uh, trying to shout him to keep focused, like just in case I wasn't going to celebrate until they, they came off the mat and gave the decision. <laughs> so he's, he's pumping his fist and I'm a bit like, whoa, whoa, whoa settle down. You don't ever plan for that. I don't know anyone that plans for a celebration or a... Uh, <laughs> it just becomes a mixture of emotions and it's a strange, but I do have vivid memories of the decision and him coming running off the mat and me going, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> In the past, it always just didn't happen. Something was not right, something went wrong. And this time, it was, everything was perfect. Everything fell in place. Yeah, it couldn't be any better, really. It's the best feeling in the world. And this is the match that all Japan has been waiting for, the final of the Musabetsu, the open division of judo. And in the ring we have, uh, from Japan, Kaminaga and big Anton Giesing from the Netherlands. Yeah, Anton Giesing fought also in this arena in 1964. Um, yeah, he's in the Netherlands, he's still very famous. And when I enter the arena, there's everywhere, there's posters of him and, and I don't know, you sort of feel, feel his vibe there or something. Before almost every fight, especially in the final, I, 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 yeah, I sort of ask his help. I'm not religious, but I, I don't know, I, it's something I do. I ask someone's help and this time it was from him uh, to help me fight against the Japanese, what he did as well. And he won it, so I was like, hey, yo, yo, mate, can you, can you come and help me as well? I need to win this fight. It's very important for me. And uh, apparently uh, somewhere maybe it works. After the Worlds, I, I, I donated my judo gi for auction, my uh, final winning judo gi, because it was for uh, cancer research. 
Some people really close to me have died from, uh, from cancer. Now I felt that finally something I can do something back to help other people, to help the research against cancer. Yeah, of course my main focus is on the Olympics now. Uh, everything for the Olympics there. That's the place where I want to achieve what I did in the 29th of August. I think in preparation for the Olympic Games, I think we'll always be creative. I'm one of the people that feels you have to adapt, you can't keep it perfectly the same. So I won't keep it exactly the same, I'll keep the principles of what we do the same. I will do everything for it, I will train as hard as I can and I hope I can get a really good medal there as well.